party of six moved quietly through the forest. Ranger Thawkins took the lead and had instructed Ferdinand to follow in the rear. The boy had argued at first that he should be in the front to help since he knew somewhat how to handle himself in a fight after weeks of hard training. I need to know no one is following us. The trio of farmers had some sort of armor marked with emblems Ferdinand didn't recognize. The boy of a few months ago would have broken the silence to ask, but he had grown up a lot since leaving Port Bray and come to the west in search of the Frost Druids, and since his apprenticeship of sorts began with Ranger Thawkins. The ranger signaled the party to stop. Motioning for Sage Recon to move up to him, Ferdinand noticed, astoundingly, the sage moved almost completely silently through the forest. In children's books, he remembered, tales would often have the hero snuck up on or surprised in a woodland. This was mostly nonsense. Men walking through the woods make more noise than is possible to ignore. Yet, when Recon walked up from the pack to the ranger, he was silent as a feather dropping to the ground. Ferdinand simply put that at the bottom of a very long list of questions he had for his mentor. Thawkins whispered something to Recon and handed him a small bag. The sage moved off in a different direction as Thawkins resumed their trek through the forest. Finding the pillagers' camp had not been as difficult as one might expect. After just a few minutes, the group came upon a clearing. Just ahead, there was a small tower standing above the trees. Around the tower, there were several pillagers, a few horses, and some... what looked to be cages. Why are they trapping villagers? Ferdinand whispered to Hin. Shrugging, Hin just shook his head, disgusted. Be ready. We're going to have to move fast and hard. I count 18 pillagers. We need to cut that number in half before they know what is happening. Ferdinand could only see maybe five. This ranger was simply amazing. His senses and attention to detail made Ferdinand feel like a child. The men readied their bows and spread out against the edge of the clearing. Seconds ticked by with Thawkins' finger in the air. More seconds. Still, they waited. Just then, from the opposite side of the prairie, a single flaming arrow arched through the sky. It was almost beautiful in its slow, graceful arc down. Then, just as it hit the roof of the pillager tower, it exploded. Fire rained down on the tower and on the pillagers. Thawkins let loose his first arrow. The arrow struck true. Before it even hit its pillager target, however, Ranger Thawkins had unleashed another. He had told the group there were 16 pillagers, although Ferdinand had only seen maybe half that number. All six men were firing away, hidden in the relative safety at the edge of the clearing. Five or six pillagers already lay dead before the first return shot came. Ferdinand had missed his first shot, but connected with the next two. Cover! Thawkins had told them when he called for cover, they needed to immediately duck behind a tree without hesitation. Ferdinand ducked behind the large spruce he was using for cover, but two men the party had gained in Monument to the Fallen didn't move fast enough. Perhaps they had tried to unleash one last arrow before hiding, but both took a simultaneous arrow. No, wait, it wasn't an arrow, it was different. A bolt, maybe. Regardless, both fell to the ground, instantly dead. The vacant eyes of Hin and Okul looked unblinkingly at the sky. Stay down! They have an enchanted crossbow at the top of the tower! Though the roof of the pillager outpost was ablaze, it seemed as though not all the pillagers had abandoned it. Ferdinand crawled just a few yards away to get a look at the outpost. He saw, with a fiery backdrop, just one pillager holding an odd kind of bow. Maybe that is what Thawkins had called a crossbow? He would watch the pillager fire again. Three bolts flew simultaneously towards the ranger's tree. Three bolts! Thawkins spun up from his tree and fired two more bolts in rapid succession. Two more pillagers fell to the ground. Ferdinand stood and fired another pillager who had been heading towards Corley. Just as Ferdinand dove back to the ground, he saw the lone pillager with his shining crossbow appear again from the outpost roof, about to fire another trio of bolts. Peeping out from behind his tree, he could see the remaining pillagers retreating to the bottom floor of the outpost. With the sniper on top of the outpost with his enchanted crossbow, there would be no way to cross the clearing between the woodland and the enemy. Just as he appeared again with that damned crossbow, about to fire, Sage Recon appeared from the shadows behind, dagger in hand. Moving silently, the sage slit the sniper's throat, dropping his body off the edge of the tower. 
With the sniper out of the way, the party made quick work of the remaining pillagers. After the battle was over, the four men gathered at the foot of the outpost. Corley, release the villagers and see their wounds. Ferdinand, retrieve our friends' bodies. We will return them to Monument of the Fallen. Ranger Thawkins glanced at Sage Recon. Let's go find your arrow. Hey, so this was a bit of an experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Lore of Vastin, this is going to be a different format that I'm going to go for here. I am looking for your feedback. Did you enjoy this more, seeing the, the still pictures, but sort of like staged uh, to tell the story visually? Or do you prefer more of the uh, moving cinematic shots of just kind of builds in Vastin? Um... I wanted to try this and see how it was. It's a lot more effort, uh, and I have very low Photoshop skills, but uh, I would expect if I did this style, then it would grow. Uh, so you have to let me know. Let me know in a comment. Did you enjoy this more, or or do you prefer more of just the moving cinematics, kind of like what you're seeing uh, up there in the picture? So a special thank you to my patrons and my YouTube members. Again, you make all this possible. You Your support makes uh, me be able to do the things I do on YouTube uh, possible. Uh, my family and I thank you very much. Um, secondly, uh, don't forget to subscribe to all my friends, uh, all the Vastin members, all the Vastin Dimensions members, um, all the new Highly Suspicious members, that's new, and, uh, and we'll see you all next episode from Lore of Vastin. Let me know your comments, I'll be reading them, uh, and, uh, looking forward to seeing what you think, okay? I'll see you next time.